Okay, here's the part that is the most important, and of this tutorial anyway. And um, we're gonna have to do a little bit of addition to our tool box here. And this is a micro saw. Uh, they come in different shapes and sizes. Um, as you can see how thin it is here. Uh, when we're getting into scratch building, you'll need this to shape the raw materials you use. Uh, in some regards, anyway. Uh, and in this case, we'll be working with Styrene 2. It comes in different sh uh, sizes. And uh, the intent here is to create a simple weapon shape. And we're going to do that, and I'll show you some smaller diameter here, by basically, let's get this to focus, there we go, uh, getting one piece of tube to fit inside of another like that, right? Kind of looks like a gun barrel already right off the bat. And you can do this multiple times. Sorry about that, there we go. You can do this multiple times um, to recreate the effects you want. Now I'm gonna show you the actual cannon here. There we go. You could replicate this, um, you know, reason, within reason anyway. And you know, you could see maybe thinking outside the box here, that almost looks like part of a mechanical pencil with, come on, focus. Oh, guys. There we go. With maybe some styrene tube in there and then drilling some holes and adding some bits on here and then you gotta maybe use the uh, the rest of the mechanical pencil or another part of a mechanical pencil. Sorry about the focus here. Oh, guys. There we go. Another part of a mechanical pencil right there to uh, come up with the uh, muzzle brake. But we're gonna get into that another time. That's more of a complex recreation here rather than uh, anything else. The consideration on the vehicle itself we have is we have this slot here and this cradle here. It has a hole in it um, to fit this gun inside of it like that. So we're going to maybe play around with a way to come up with this uh, bracket up here. And we're going to find a diameter of rod that sits there, the last consideration. And I know this is maybe getting a little complex, but it's not that bad, is that uh, on the modern Stingray, or Sting Raider, excuse me. This uh, wall here that the gun butts up against is actually on an angle. So all I did was take a piece of tube and a pencil and I put the edge just past the wall and I drew a line parallel on there. It's on a curved surface, you have to be careful, okay? And then you just draw a little line, fuzzy line that looks like that. And then you take your saw and you place it on that line and you're just going to drag it along to create that initial cut okay it's pretty easy to do but just lightly drag it and it'll start creating a little groove in the plastic and then once you've got that you can saw all the way through now you can do that on a cutting mat or you can put it on the edge of your table and saw in air just keep in mind that these are bendy a little bit and flexible because it's plastic so uh the key is going slow um, if you have a cutting mat then you know you can go all texas chainsaw massacre and then the end result of that is you have an angled cut, just like that. And then when we test, right, it'll sit right up against it, just like that. You'll know it's off if there's a gap. And if there's a little bit of a gap, that's fine too. Um, I've had a little bit of practice of doing this. And certainly in this case, it takes um, a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but that time and patience will pay off. Now, when we butt the end of the gun up to this wall here, we're not worried about a model kit where we would maybe fill that in and putty it to make it look like part of the of the uh, the vehicle itself. I mean, there's gaps here, there's a gap there, you know, there's panel gaps. And while this detail here is molded in, the gun itself, the original gun, is not. So there is, you'll notice a break there. Uh, and that's fine. This diameter of tube also sits, if not perfectly, then nicely in that crate. So the, um, if you're following along for this portion, the diameter of this rod is, I think it came out of this bag. Yeah, 1130 seconds. So it comes in bags like this. It's made by a company called um, Evergreen, I think. Yeah, Evergreen Scale Models. There it is there. Um, and it does uh, inches and it does millimeters. Um, and then what you gotta do is find a tube that fits inside of it, which I already did for you. And that is the next one, well, kind of the next one down, second one down anyway, 9.30 seconds. So you want to get 11.30 seconds and 9.30 seconds. And the good news is 
is that the only angle cut we have to make is the one to butt it up against here. After that, it just becomes a matter of deciding how long your gun's gonna be and how many uh, steps downward and then back up you want in your gun. So uh, most cannons like this have maybe one or two steps down. Um, we don't want the cannon to look too big. I mean, if you, could, if you wanted to at the end of the day, because it's your custom, you do what you like, you could just cut this tube off straight down and have these huge ginormous lasers coming out of it. And that's cool. But I think that we could push ourselves just a little bit to um, make it a little bit more dynamic looking. So the next thing I'm gonna introduce you to is a, what's called a miter box. Uh, and some of these saws, like this red handled saw I've got here, actually came with one. Uh, but they can be bought separately, if I recall correctly. I don't remember because I bought mine a long time ago. Um, which seems to have disappeared. So anyways, what a miter box does is it allows you to sit um, a piece of styrene inside. There it is. It's hiding. Sorry about that. Um, and it looks like this. This is a miter box. And it's got these channels in here, and then it's got these groove, well, yeah, we'll call them grooves, they're also channels, for the saw in here. And what that does is it, these channels lets you cut a perpendicular line or an angled line. Now this angle, in case you were wondering, is too steep for that. So the eyeballing, drawing the line there is a much uh, more accurate technique. But now all we're doing is, um, a straight cut, and all we're doing from now on is straight cuts. So all it takes is finger pressure to hold it inside that center groove. And I'm gonna use this middle channel here to cut the styrene. So, um, and this saw fits inside those channels, just like that. So you can see how it goes all the way in there, and it cuts it all the way down, and uh, you'll have a nice clean cut. So what I'm gonna do here, uh, when you're making two of these, because we're going to, <laughs> um, the first one you can kind of guess. You don't really have to measure anything. You can really eyeball how far you want that other part to come out. Um, and I'm gonna go maybe just a little bit past that. So I'm gonna draw a line on there and uh, use that as my reference. I'll measure the pieces after for the second, uh, for the second weapon here. So, my workspace is getting a little cluttered here. Everything's disappearing and there's rods everywhere. I love it, I love it, okay. Um, you know what, let's use a marker. If the pencil wants to hide, then we will reject that pencil. So all I'm gonna do is, I want it to come to, yeah, let's say about there. So let's do that, right there. Okay, now I'm gonna put that inside my miter box and prepare to cut it. Now, I'm trying a different angle here because I'll need both hands up close to do this. So let's see how this works on camera. And there we go. So now what I'm doing is I'm gripping the miter box and holding the styrene rod in place with my thumb. Now, my mark is down the center of that channel where the saw is gonna go. And then I'm just gonna start sawing. Now this is gonna squeal pretty loud, so hopefully your speakers aren't up too loud or your headphones aren't up super loud. And I'm doing this on an angle, so it's a little funny here. Give me a sec, I'll get, uh, I'll get set up. And you can, if you want to, just drag the saw through, um, pulling it towards you. That will actually cut it uh, as well. And it also helps you get started. So there's gonna be some squeak in here. There we go. Like that. And there we go. So you now have a pretty decently straight edge to work with for the next piece. And we have our cut uh, first part of the cannon. So all I'm doing right now is there's some burrs and stuff on there, so I'm just gonna wipe those off with my, my finger. You can scratch them off with your fingernail sometimes too. Um, if you still have that 400 grit sandpaper that we use to remove the Cobra sigil, you can certainly use that on there as well. Uh, the thing being is we want nice uh, joins in all of our pieces, because when we paint this, you can paint it with an airbrush or you can hand brush it or whatever you like. Um, but we don't wanna have any uh, you can see here on the edge, so we'll get to focus. see how there's that white bits there? I'm gonna get rid of those, so it looks like a nice uh, professionally made piece. And there it is. 
Now you might be wondering when I made my first cut there on the angle, why I didn't um, start at the very end of the pipe. And really what will happen is, is that you might catch the edge or whatever, and then you get a little misshapen part of it. So I just moved in a bit from the edge and that way I've got a completely flat surface that way. Uh, and I just want to show you again this up close. So there's the saw itself and there's the miter box. If I wanted to cut 45 degree angles on it, then I just put it in like that and the guides keep the saw in place while I'm holding the stock wherever I want it to be. And there's different size channels for different sizes of stock. So that tube is pretty big, so it went in the center channel, but you could put it anywhere you needed to there in any of those channels to get it. So you got a miter box and a saw. Okay, those are the new tools that we're talking about today. So, now that I've done that, I can take my next size down. So I had the, um, the 11, this is the 11 30 seconds tube. And now we're gonna cut a length of 9 30 seconds tube. Right, because we, we want it to step down. Having uh, overly large steps in between your, your barrel segments looks a little contrived. Okay, look at that. And the good news is when we use the glue on this, We'll have the, we'll use a relatively slow setting glue, so we'll have time to make sure that that's seated in there properly uh, and nice and flush after we paint it, of course. Um, it is recommended to pre-paint this, um, like build it in place as you go. And then once the glue's dry, then it's definitely recommended to um, paint it separate from the vehicle itself so you can make sure you've got proper coverage. You don't have to, but we're gonna be playing with fate there, so we don't wanna do that too, too much. So there's the first section. Let's get the second section going here. At 9.30 seconds. So I just gotta open up the package here. And these uh, these packages of tubing, you can get them in super long lengths. They're just regular lengths. Um, what does that mean in context? Well, one bag's gonna be have longer pieces in it than another. Uh, this cost me, uh, what is it? Some of them are four bucks, some of them are six bucks Canadian. So, um, you know, pick your poison. Now, what we want to do when we're fitting the tubes inside of each other is you don't want to go obviously that far out because then you've got a flat end again. So you can have your tube glued into wherever you want. Um, I like having a good amount in there just because, um, so let's get back to focus here. I like having a relatively good amount in there because you don't want to put it just barely in, you want to give it some strength. Um, and also the closer you are to the edge, the more likely it is that it will bend and move. So you put a little bit more in there and what you want to do too is that as best as you can you want to size your tubes so that there's no gaps between the sections. Um, reason being if we did something like this there's no way you can keep that you know without losing your sanity in the center of the tube. Sorry, there we go. You couldn't keep that in the center of the tube and those air gaps don't look like a real uh, necessarily a real deal. I know different weapons look different ways but the way to sell this idea is to make sure that the tubes are snug inside of each other. So, now that we have another length, what I'm gonna do, and this is uh, when you're planning your first one, right? Like I said, you're not measuring anything. You're, you're fitting and you're judging. Um, and once you get it where you want it, that's when you wanna, yeah, there we go. Eh, maybe about. So I'm going to landmark that at the base of the uh, forward windscreen there. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. And now uh, all of my running utensils have disappeared. It's almost like there's a gremlin in here stealing all the stuff I need. That would be so cool. Okay, so. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, holy man. It does help to keep your tools organized, folks. So I'm gonna mark it, you know, right about there. And with your second, when you're making your second weapon, you don't have to have the exact same length in there, right? You could, um, as long as the same length sticks out from this piece to where you want it to stop. Um, that may not make sense, but no one's gonna be seeing the inside of this. So no one's gonna be, uh, even you can't really judge whether or not it's 100% perfect. Um, so now it's back into the miter saw. And this is, um, it, it's not a tedious process at all. It's actually um, pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. So my thumb's there, locking the piece in. And, well, now I'm gonna use my index finger, but same, same. 
I'm going to drag the saw across the plastic. And you can saw back and forth, but what I found with the teeth being so small and everything, um, just dragging it each time is actually a little far more efficient and the uh, you're at far less risk of the uh, plastic moving inside the miter. There we go. And now we have our second piece. So you could mark it uh, inside of the larger tube where it goes up to and then whatever if you want to be super precise. I'm not worried about that at this moment in time because uh, we don't need to be super precise just yet, right? Because we're building the first one. Um, if you're worried about things like maybe you've heard of resin casting and all that stuff to produce an exact replica of this, you absolutely could. Um, the consideration is that resin's really expensive for what you're going to be do using it for. Um, and if you're a model builder and this is your foray into G.I. Joe customizing and you want to do that, go ahead. But in the meantime, um, you don't really have to. So I'm going to carry on with my design. You see the basic principle of fitting one tube inside of another. And uh, I'll show you the end result and then I'll explain how I got what I got. So just hang tight. And here we go. So once you've built your first cannon, right, we've got uh, what I've done here, I'll walk you through. I've got a couple of step downs here and then I have a flash suppressor. That's a basic cannon shape. It's kind of evocative of the uh, Mobat cannon. And uh, while it may seem I don't know, just like a bunch of, you know, almost like a telescope really it kind of works for that too. Um, once we get it onto the vehicle itself and um, situated, then you'll see, we're also gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna show you how to make a cradle for it because if you look at this gun here, it's got a bit of a cradle that goes into this slot in here. Um, you don't need it. As long as you put some paint in there to cover it up, then uh, you'll be fine. So. Uh, in this case, now that we've got our, our finalized design, there's going to be two things we have to do. The first thing I want you to do is take some white glue, okay? Uh, this is what I use here. It's just Elmer's straight glue all multi-purpose white glue. And what you'll notice is um, that even though these tubes are designed to fit inside of each other, you'll still see some gaps in there, and that's because nothing's perfect, right? So the reason for the white glue is you're going to take some on a Q-tip, just like this one here. And you're gonna just pour it around in the corners here and then you're gonna wipe off the excess with a damp Q-tip head. And what that's gonna do is the glue's gonna run into those gaps and fill them up, okay? You're gonna do that for the whole thing. Now, how do we replicate this? Well, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the original size of the tube and you're gonna do the same thing you did before. So you're gonna put it on the side here where the wall is, draw your little line and cut it off so you get another angled piece of your widest tube. Then you're gonna take this original here and you're gonna measure from the top of it to as far forward as it is. You're gonna measure that in millimeters. The other thing I did is once you've got it properly seated there, right, because there's nothing, there's nothing holding it in the exact position you need it. So settle it down and when you don't see or you see minimal gaps, I drew a little pencil line there. Let's see if I can show you. You can barely make it out there, but there is a pencil line. You know what? Forget barely making it out. I'm gonna redraw it for you. So that pencil line there marks center, okay? So when I put it on there, I'm gonna measure from the center line now. I know that's the, the longest part of the uh, styrene to this edge, okay? And that's, I'm gonna draw a line on the new cut piece and I'm going to cut it off there to rec recreate something the same length. And you're gonna do that for each subsequent piece. So you're gonna measure from where they connect to the end of it and then you're gonna add a few millimeters onto it so it fits inside. And when you measure each, I want you to put a hash mark on it so you know exactly where to stop, okay? Exactly where to stop. And once you've got it where you want it, you're then going to take some glue, glue of your choice. I use Plastic Magic. It's a little expensive, but it's low to no odor and it works very well. Um, in this case, you wanna stay away from the thicker glues because you want it to run in there. Um, and all I did was brush glue around the joint. Um, I'll leave that choice up to you. Certainly talk to uh, the staff at your local hobby store and go from there. And you're gonna do the same thing with this and with this. The only difference being is with the end of it, you're gonna make this piece a few extra millimeters here and a few extra millimeters here. Uh, the reason for that is that you wanna fit the last piece of tube over top and you only wanna have a single thickness of tube there. If you had two if you had the thickness of both tubes there, it might look a little fake or whatever. Um, and what this does is it 
gives you a realistic looking gun barrel. I gotta clean out the inside of this one. Um, so then it gives you two choices. You can either A, fill this up with uh, an acrylic putty to make it look like regular guns, right? They're not hollowed out. Or you can leave it as is. And if you want it to go even further, you could drill out the gun barrels here, okay? And we're starting to kind of deviate away from the Hasbro aesthetic. So um, I am likely gonna fill mine up with putty and sand it smooth, and then we'll have a solid uh, gun barrel. Um, and if you don't think that that's necessarily the best way to go, I've already made the second one. And as you can see, within all human reasonability, reason, reasonability-ness, whatever, <laughs> either way, um, they're the same. Okay, and that, all that was was just some measuring, uh, drawing lines on tubes, and cutting. Okay, using that micro saw and the miters and the uh, miter box that I showed. So now I have two identical cannons. Both have been filled with the white glue. All I'm going to do is put some putty in there, and uh, we'll carry on from there. The next thing I'm going to show you um, is the creation of that cradle. So I want to just point out that um, if all you do is make the gun barrel, if making a cradle is too complex, uh, which is fair, right? Because this is a beginner channel and we're just starting out with this stuff. And what you've seen here, I mean, you can see it right now. Look at that. That actually looks really nice on there, doesn't it? I really, really like that. Uh, and we weren't even trying to match the aesthetic of the original piece. So as far as I'm concerned, that works. Um, if the, and the attachment point for this will be there. And if you wanted to, you could glue the end of it to the, uh, the hull up here too. But if you want to get rid of that slot in there, sorry, I'm pointing at it with my mean finger. If you want to get rid of that slot in there, the answer is making a cradle. And I'm going to show you how to make those right now. Okay, this is for making the brackets for our deck cannons. What I've done is I've measured the diameter of this. Well, we know what it is, right? This uh, will be 7 seconds rod here on the end, um, which is also the same diameter as this. So if you wanted to have a bracket that went over top of the gun, you could right and then it just fits through that hole there and slide it over the gun that's why we made uh, this rod and this rod at the end here the flush suppressor of the same diameter okay it makes your life a little bit easier but in this case we're gonna be making um, a cradle uh, and I know that sounds complex and it's really not all that difficult so what I've done is I've taken uh, a sheet of plastic here thin sheet plastic because it's got to be able to fit in this slot here okay and I've drilled two holes. I didn't measure anything. I just drilled them into the plastic. Uh, they just happen to be roughly in the same line as a fluke. Okay, so the dimensions that we settled on were nine millimeters by 14. That's how that's gonna come. How I got that and I drew these lines was that a 7 seconds hole is five millimeters wide. So you find the widest point, mark it off on the top and on the sides. Okay, so you've got almost like a little crosshair looking thing. Then you take your lines and you draw them, you extend that crosshair through both circles and then all the way down. And then that'll give you the rough outline for your shape. Okay, and then you take, because we want it nine millimeters wide, it's gonna be four and a half millimeters either side of center. So you just mark off a little hash mark, four and a half millimeters either side of the center line and draw a straight line up. Then you do the same thing at the side here. Uh, you wanted nine millimeters, so you have two millimeters on either side because the circle is five plus two is seven plus two is nine so there's your width right there and you'll have this one's a little messy because i missed a line here but if you look at this one here on the left that's exactly what you'll end up with and you will have a um, straight piece now how do you make sure that the uh, lines are perpendicular to the edges right if you're working with a factory edge which means the edge of the sheet here with all the hash marks on your ruler they're technically drawn on there to be perpendicular to the edge of the ruler. Uh, this is plastic, so yeah, there can be uh, wearing over time if you beat this up a lot or whatever. But as long as that hash line is even on the edge, you'll have a perpendicular line there. So that's all I did with that. There's nothing magic about it. It's just using the lines on the ruler itself to uh, give you that uh, true edge. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, we're introducing another tool for this. Um, and if you don't want to do the um, the brackets, like I said, if you're finished gun, it'll sit on there just fine, right? Because you're going to glue it into the cradle. You'll just have a little gap down there. And really, does that matter? No, you can tell yourself it's a vent or something like that. And that looks fantastic, right? So um, 
anyway, I want to go that extra step and I want to show you how to do it. Uh, because now we're getting into the scratch building world. And once we do some basic stuff like this, then you can um, go even further. And we will be going further in a later tutorial. So um, I've got a Dremel tool here with a cutting disc on it. Um, this is something you want to do very slowly and very carefully. I have to do it off screen because my workspace is very cramped here, but I'll show you the end result. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that saw blade through those lines. Um, and if, for example, like my saw blade can't touch here, I'm actually probably going to cut out this little piece and then work with it as a little piece from the overall larger sheet. Uh, and just to give you an idea, if you recognize those shapes, those are Phantom X-19 fins. Um, and I was going to scratch build some. Uh, for a future project. So once you start getting into the styrene sheet and rod world, um, you can really, really sort out a lot of problems and then get super creative with a lot of things. So I'm just going to cut those out and then you'll see the brackets when they're done. But it's a simple shape and basically all I decided to do is make one of those, almost like, remember when you were a kid and you had one of those do not disturb things that hangs on your doorknob? Picture that with the upper half of the circle cut off. And that's all it is. Um, so I'll show you what I mean in the end, but I have to do it off camera because of space, so just hang tight. And here we are with the finished cuts. Uh, as you can see, what happens, right, and I want you to be super careful when you're doing something like this, is the plastic will bunch up. It's kind of like it's melting and stuff. It's, uh, call it the sawdust of the plastic styrene world. Um, so we're just gonna clean those up, but now what you can see is you've got two pieces that are technically identical. They'll look more identical once I clean them up. But uh, there is your cradles right there and that's all there is to it, right? So it's like I said, half of one of those door hanger signs. Um, so I'm gonna clean these up with an X-Acto knife and some sandpaper. And the other thing I'm gonna do, um, if you'll notice with styrene, when you work with it, start working with it, a lot of these edges are very sharp. They're very well defined. But yet when you look to the vehicles themselves, very few of these edges are super sharp. There's almost like a microscopic curve to them, um, or they're kind of dull. Let's just call it kind of dull. So I'm going to do the edges of my styrene so it helps blend in with the aesthetic of the vehicle. It's such a small, fine thing to do, but um, for your preference and to help blend everything in, right? Because we want to try and... It's one thing to scratch build something and stick it on there, but if you can blend it into the construction aesthetic of the vehicle you're working on, it helps sell the illusion that much more. So I'm gonna do that and then uh, we'll start working on putting the guns together.